Now welcome to a review of Echo on Disney+. Plus. This is going to be a review of just the first episode, and we're going to start off non-spoiler, and then move into spoiler territory. Kind of give us some of our overall thoughts on it. If you're someone who's interested in checking it out, or perhaps on the fence about checking it out, you can listen to our opinions, and maybe that'll sway you one way or the other. Anyway, let's, uh, let's kick it off. What did you think of the first episode of Echo? I was very intrigued. Mind you, we have only watched the first episode, so we yep. can't spoil the ending for you. Yes, all it's episodes all, all episodes are available from the get-go, mm-hmm. which is very different than what Disney Plus normally does. Yes, all five. It's weird because the episode length varies so much. I mean, the first Seems episode is like 51, yeah. then 41, then 44, then like... The last two are 30 and like 31 minutes or 36 minutes. Yeah, they seem minutes. to decline in length, which mm-hmm. is curious, but it is what it is. It is what it is. They probably just broke it up at places they thought felt like natural breaks, I guess, which I'm all for. That's fine. Especially as soon as they release it all at once. If they would do it weekly, those 30-minute episodes would feel shortchanged. Well, yeah. The tone, I kind of... I kind of Doug, that it was very different than the usual Marvel. Not the bright color superhero yeah, it fest. Was, it was darker. They want you to feel more. They want the emotions to flow. Certainly a lot more grounded than we have mm-hmm. maybe gotten used to in Marvel. Not a lot of colorful and superheroes and kind of corny humor or, right. you know, unnecessary jokes. And if you didn't watch Hawkeye, it's kind of okay. They kind of um, cover the pieces of her story that relate to that show somewhat. Yes and no. That might actually... I mean, we're, again, we're not in spoiler territory, but Mm-mm. if you have seen Hawkeye, the show, you will know it kind of spills over into her story or vice versa, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. Yes, and she's so, a part of his story and he was a part of hers. Yeah, and so there is a part where they kind of... I mean, this first episode is a lot of recapping and kind of set up. It, it's a very strange structure. It doesn't really feel like your a average little disjointed, or standard I would first say. episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's there are parts where if you haven't seen these things, you're like, oh, I, I, I guess I could kind of get the gist mm-hmm. of it. I'm not sure. I've seen them, so I, I know what it's referring to. Yes. So if you haven't seen them, I don't know if it's clear or if it maybe needs a little more context or what. I would say the action and the violence is definitely closer to what we would have seen on Netflix had they done the show. Reminded me some of that in it, that vein, the, the feels, darker color yes. palette, the, the violence, the fights... It, it felt feels more very like similar to the Netflix mark. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be real. That's kind of what they're going for, right? That's absolutely they know what they're going for. A lot of people for. loved that, and Be- those were the street level heroes. We're back mm-hmm. to street level heroes, so kind of makes sense to try to recapture that magic. If they can't manage to do this in Daredevil, it'd be very sad. Yeah, which we had heard it was like a lawyer show, and then they scrapped the whole thing. So thank goodness, because yeah. It needs to not be a lawyer show. Yeah, there's not a ton of fight scenes in the first episode, but they are, again, very reminiscent of what you've seen Mm -hmm. in Daredevil, or the MCU, Netflix verse, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they're very intense. Very intense, like one camera, Mm -hmm. you know, not like kind of cutting from one to the other. and Shaky cam wasn't there. Shaky cam, and yeah, so it's very cool. What they've done so far is very cool and promising. But it's still set up. Episodes going further into the story should give us a better rounding it, of where the better. story's going to go. Because like you said, this one, it's very recappy. It's a very recap and just kind of, you could tell it's not much of a, you're, you're again, if you haven't seen all this, I'm, I'm really curious to, to know what people think because I feel like you're kind of going to be confused. Without seeing Hawkeye, you mean? Just all of it. Just because, I, I mean, there, there are aspects of other shows in there maybe, kind of. Not really, I guess. It's mostly Hawkeye. Yeah, it's just some dabble of Hawkeye, but we're trying to follow her story and learn who he, she is. Yeah. And it's a darker path. Yeah, it's definitely, she's not your average hero. I'll <laughs> say that. Right, this isn't she's not exactly a starting out as some sort of a hero story. No, she's. it's very dark. It's very, it's different. It's very mm-hmm. different, and I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. It's just I think different. that people should probably give this a watch, give this a chance. Hopefully I'm saying that at the end, that this was worth it. Yeah. Mind you, like I said, we haven't seen the end. We've only seen the beginning. But no, I would say if you enjoyed the Marvel Netflix stuff, that this seems to be something you'd want to give a chance to, at least mm-hmm. after one episode. Again, might change my mind down the road, but so far, so good. Right. If Marvel can give us something like this on Disney+, Plus, maybe that can speak well for the future projects they're planning on doing with more street-level heroes. Yeah, I would be... You know, I, I have my fingers crossed right now. Mm-hmm. As someone who really enjoyed most, the majority of the Netflix stuff, I, I have my fingers crossed. 
Right, let's move into spoiler territory because it's hard to talk about the show without talking yeah. about things that happened in the so, show. So, red alert, red alert. <laughs> move away if you haven't uh, seen it and don't want it ruined. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we called off the bat. We all knew Kingpin was going to be alive. Of course, yeah. I do kind of really enjoy the way they're taking her character. The fact that she's going to start out. And honestly, in the comics, she was also kind of raised-ish by the Kingpin as well. Well, she's a horrible person right now. Yeah, she, she murders she's, people. She's bad. I don't care if there are other bad people. You don't necess- You don't usually see heroes. Well, and she was murdering whoever she had to before. She sure. was raised to be a gangster. Well, she yeah, I guess from a young young age, yeah, because early her on, dad her, was before here. her mom died, yeah. Though her dad didn't want this life for her, but then he kind of allowed her to be in it anyhow. Yeah, and then he gets killed, which we saw in Hawkeye mm-hmm. originally. And, yeah, yeah. and she trained in martial arts since she was a, a wee little one. And there does clearly seem to be a supernatural element to this that was not in the Hawkeye show, shall we say? Like, she's still awakening to it. Yeah. Like, clearly it was something that was involved with her ancestors, because the grandmother saw the woodpecker. Yeah. And we saw the flashback to the old stories of her people involving yeah. the woodpecker being an omen of sorts. Well, it's interesting because they did that kind of cleverly because it was the two kids kind of, or she was telling the story to her cousin. So you don't know if that's actually true or just their origin story. Did that really happen or well, it's not? It's just a folktale. For, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think it obviously has happened. I think mm-hmm. the, the bird was the sign and, and we're going to see more of it. But it, it was a very clever way to do it, not to just like imply like, yes, this absolutely happened. It's their folk, you know, it's their history, and I think we're going to see more of it. But I'm kind of excited to see more, to see where they're going to, to take her character. It's Daredevil. I definitely really liked how Daredevil fought during this. Yeah. That he was making good use of his batons. They had the extensions, you know. He was doing, definitely you could, t- you could tell he was using his, like, sight beyond sight. Because <laughs> at times Susan he was, like, backwards, cats. but still managing to dodge her. Yeah. It was very well done, the fight. The fact that he kept blocking her from getting weapons. That she yeah, was, he was just holding her own. She wasn't winning. She no, was holding no. her own. It seemed like Daredevil may have been even taking it easy on her to a degree. Mm-hmm. He was just trying to basically stop her from shooting him yes. or doing other she things. Was, to he him, was trying so. to like just stop her, not hurt her. Yeah. But I thought that was well done. And again, mm-hmm. that was very Netflix-esque where you have basically one long shot where you're not just cutting and mm-hmm. shaky cam. You're like, what the hell is even going on? So that, that, w- that boded well for the future. I do think it takes a little getting used to to have your main character not be... I'm going to say a uh, verbal speaking character. It's different. It's interesting. I'm not against it. No, no, it's not just, against it. It's just interesting what they do with the sound in the show because of it. Sometimes trying to put things into stuff, her yeah. perspective where this is all she can hear. She cannot hear normally. Yeah. This, so it's interesting. It's an it's interesting a, it's a hurdle, way to display I think, it. And they're, they're trying to use it as a strength is what mm-hmm. I think they're going for to try to make it kind of interesting. Again, that excites me for what they could do in the Daredevil show working with a character who cannot see. See, yeah. So I, I like that they're being creative with yeah, finding like a said, way yeah. to make this work. No, because that certainly could be, again, a hindrance, and they're trying to make it something kind of unique and cool for you to experience. Mm-hmm. To kind of give you a little bit of perspective about what things are like in her world. Yeah. Because obviously being a fighter when you cannot hear must be difficult. Well, because sure, she's missing yeah. out on some of those physical cues that you could normally hear. Yeah. You could hear people running up on you mm-hmm. or maybe, you know... Other verbal cues, you know, the, the gun cocked heavy before or, it yeah, fires. Anything, yeah. I mean, if someone sneaks up on her with a with a weapon, she's not going to exactly know they're there. Yeah. But they're trying to give us a hint about what she is aware of and what she can be aware of, which yeah. I find very interesting. The portrayal of Kingpin. We'll get onto that. Fantastic. He feels more badass in this than he did in Hawkeye. He feels like he could be more involved. Yeah, I, I almost got the sense in Hawkeye that he wasn't like as big Kingpin. of a deal. Yeah, and this, you know, he rolls up and the police are like, "Yep, that's Kingpin." We he's do what he says. That is yeah, and, the, and his reach seems to stretch much, yeah. much further than they give you the impression of. Yeah, and like I said, in Hawkeye, you didn't get the impression that you know this was Kingpin. You know, the same one you see in the again the, the Netflix mm-hmm. version where he was you know badass and he's played. Beautifully here as well as he was at Netflix. So Whereas very his, excited about his that. His reach here is stretching all the way to her hometown in Oklahoma. Yeah, he's yeah he's big. He's time. shipping things across country. Who the hell he knows is, what he's up to? Yeah, he's definitely got something going on, and I know we're going to see more of his character, more of his story with Maya along the way. Yeah, more of where he's going to go after this. Definitely the the three minutes he's in this, <laughs> or whatever it was, five minutes. It's already more impressive than seeing him in Hawkeye. I think. It's great that they can show how strong and how dangerous he is without him doing anything. 
Well, it's just the way he, he does the, the care. presence, like, the care. Yeah, yeah the just, way he there's speaks. Just, it's something about the way he speaks and just the, you can just feel his, he's trying to keep everything in, right? Mm-hmm. He feels like he's a powder keg, like. Yes. Just ready to blow it any second. You just don't like wanna... he did in the Netflix show. Exactly. You can always feel it. And he again, he portrays the character so so just terrifying. It's perfect. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, we're gonna keep watching the rest of the season. When we're done, we're gonna put up a review of the entirety of Echo. So then you'll know how we feel about it. Yeah, we'll see if the, the opening hope turns into uh, a pleasant surprise in the end mm-hmm. or disappointment. Marvel's Andor, maybe? <laughs> ah, that is a that is a tall task. <laughs> well, this is wanna... coming again for people who haven't seen the whole thing. So people could be watching this who have seen the whole thing. Please don't leave spoilers in yes. the comment section. Yes. Be kind to Be people. kind, rewind. Be, be kind, rewind. Do <laughs> not... the time when you didn't see the rest of the episode. We just don't need it spoiled for the others who... who have, yeah, or have ourselves. Or we, ourselves. Yeah, we don't know when we're going to be able to see the whole series, so... Mm. Anyway, that is going to be all we got for you this time. Now it is your turn. Take to the comments below. Tell us what you thought of the first episode of Echo. And let's talk some Marvel. And so until next time, thanks for watching.